they're interesting. Like the ones that you get that are like, hey, can you send me pictures of your ass? It's like there are so many other asses you can find online. Why why do you want mine specifically? Because they see you and they're enamored by you and they think you're funny and they just want to see those cheeks I clap. I don't know if it's a <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna make it clap for them. <laughs> I Listen, told Jack I'd There's a price you. tag for everything. There's a price Michael. tag. Uh, I don't know. We're As uh, as the night went on, my intros just got more like, give it up for them, everybody. <laughs> it was so bad. I forget who came up with me. Like, dude, it was so much funnier watching you get progressively more drunk as the night went on. Like, as it went on, I just like stopped telling people's names. And I was like, and next up is this person. And I felt bad. But Cody wasn't even there, so you couldn't be mad at me. Do I talk so much louder than everyone else? Or is that... You project a little more than else. It also depends on the microphone, but we're all right. We can start this whenever we want. We started 45 minutes into the last episode. Ooh, Let's do it. Which we need to get you all 30 minutes of that footage. Because I, was, it's, I cannot wait. It is, I cannot wait. You on, just put it on your website. It's just 30 minutes of us being like, this is sick. <laughs> I just go, <laughs> I just go well, man, this is this is working. Like I remember, I remember being just so amazed that the thing that holds it, is inside the koozie because have you ever uh, seen those like shaker cups that you put like the protein on the bottom of it? I have not, but okay, I so know it's like a shaker about. cup and you can like store your protein. This is so juicy, I haven't used this in years, but because it's poor design, not like the choosy. Um, but what happened was it's like you just lock it in at the bottom and it, it just makes the shaker cup taller, so eventually it becomes this unwieldy t- leaning tower of pizza. And you have to like somehow fight with it to not fall over all the time. And this one is discreet. That's why discreet. I designed it that exactly. way. Exactly, it's perfect. I was you don't like even know so what you're excited. Drinking. Well, let's let's introduce him first. All so, right. for those of you who don't know, after our two-hour episode, this is the man, the myth, the choosy. The, uh, my name is Mickey Sullivan. Yes, but I am the choosy guy as well. That is that is the alter ego. Yeah. You prefer should we just call you Choosy? You can call Sully. me Sully. You like Sully? Sully? Yeah. You can call me Sully. I've yeah. learned I can't call you Sir, but that's just, no. I, it's a go-to when I answer the phone. I'm like, what's up, Sir? Yeah. Um, or, I say Sir a lot. Don't love Sir, that. or I need to stop saying Big Man. <laughs> big Man. You need to put, you need to retire Big Man immediately. <laughs> you know, if someone called me Big Man, I'd be so mad. I think, Especially coming from if, my little body. If, yeah, someone, don't know if someone at work called me Big Man, I'd give him a tea twister and put in my two weeks. <laughs> as I do. That'd be so wild. I hear big guy, like big, big guy, guy every once in a while. But, guy. but no, not sir. Sir is not. That makes me feel old, so I would appreciate yeah, you not. That's uh, fair. That's fair. Um, I, call I, I, work, sir. I, I answered the phone when he got here. I was like, what's up, sir? Uh, he's like, all right, enough with the sir. And then I go downstairs. I'm like, how are you, sir? I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> it sticks. Sometimes it's hard. I call everyone at work, sir. And now, I feel, now that what you're saying right now is making your Leah. Uh, Think back. I thought conscious of it. Yeah. Shit. It's not well, dude, let me say this first of all. Yeah. I I fucking and I don't know if you're an amazing editor, yeah. but I've seen several episodes now, and I I wore my shortest shorts. I don't know how I haven't <laughs> seen one testicle in all the episodes I've watched because you guys oh, all don't wear they, your yeah. short shorts, and now you're leaving me no, hanging, bro. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, wear, I, don't wear, I don't wear my pants on the stage because I know today, we're so. going out after this. Oh, and trust me, Lord. when I edit them and I'm looking, I'm like, dude, it's all thigh. It's, it's all, all thigh, but it, the problem is, is like you sit back into these chairs, and so the shorts go down. Shorts go up. There's a little bit of bulge going. Yeah, I have the first video that ever did well for uh, this show was because of my nuts. It was. Yeah, did, I was. Did it come a, out? Was your bulge? It was my bulge. I had a. I got a new pair of sweat shorts, and they were smaller than I thought. And I was sitting on a bar stool, and I, when I was editing, I'm like, you can see the entire outline of my dick right now. And so I blurred it out, and then a bunch of people were like, dude, unblurred. I'm like, this is the wrong audience. I'm not looking for you guys right now. <laughs> no, you to see my balls. Well, my balls are a little bit older and more free-spirited, so <clears throat> I'm hoping they, they, don't, they don't you know, come out to say hi, but I wore my shortest shorts just for you guys because yeah, I thought that's what we were doing, and then – It's the athletic ones wearing, that slide yeah, down, yeah. yeah. Wearing I think we're going to stick with the foot fetish community and, the, All right. and the, the piss fetish community. They, I mean, they they represent pretty well, and I think they have they the, are. the money to, to throw around. And I, that's why. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. yeah. There's our there's our game day, there's our game day bag back there for anyone that wants to purchase it. Sully's gonna contribute to the sock bag. Now, <laughs> I, I am not. My feet are not. They're not very good. I mean, you can't tell they're in the sock. 
Well, all that's they care true, about is the stink. But I've been told I have hobbit feet, like kind of flat and hairy, you know. Well, so, so maybe maybe they'll be lucky and they'll catch a little bit of uh, extra flavor. In yeah, there. if you like yeah. some northerner <laughs> hobbit feet that are a little. So grimy. are you? You're originally from Ohio. Yes, I'm from Toledo, Ohio. Um, I grew up. Uh, I lived there for 18 years and then went away to school at Ohio University. But as a kid, my parents were kind of shitty. They were fucked up, and so they got divorced when I was like eight or nine. And so when I would go to school, I had two older sisters and they went away. They were already away at college and whatnot. Um, and when I would go to school, then I wanted to be like class clown, like the funny dude at school because my home life sucked balls. So I became like the class clown and that was like who I was. Yep. And I got voted class clown in grade school and in high school. And I was like that wild dude that always was up for anything. <laughs> Started drinking in seventh mm. and eighth grade. Mm. Have a lot of crazy stories. Sound like my little and, brother. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and so I went away to school. I went to Ohio University. Um, had a lot of fun there. And uh after school, I moved out to D.C. My girlfriend at the time, she lived out there, and uh, we've lived out there ever since. So we live in Maryland now, right outside of D.C. Nice. But, yep. So we we uh, let's go, I want to go sport wise. Where where's our allegiance? Are we? Oh boy. Yeah, we, I'm all we, over the map, man. You're all over so, the map. Yeah. yeah. Caps. I do like the caps. I hopped on their bandwagon as well as the Nats, but like the skins, I just can't. Yeah. But now they got new ownership, so I mean, I could. You're probably... not a Bengal fan, not a Browns fan. Oh, so Toledo is like right in the middle of Cleveland, Detroit, Cincinnati, Columbus, all that stuff. So we and we didn't have anything our, to our own, so it was like, I was a huge Pistons. Still, Pistons are my yeah. favorite. So they're, okay. and they're dog shit right now. So I'm happy to represent them because they're on the upswing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they were my basketball is my favorite sport. I love the Pistons. Um, for football, I grew up watching like those Niners dynasties. I'm older than you guys, uh, like the Montana ones when I was real little. And then Steve Young, still Jerry yeah. Rice, Ricky Waters, all those guys. And they had great dynasties. So I stuck with the Niners. Um, and then for baseball, I used to love the Tigers, but I haven't seen a fucking Tigers game since now. Yeah. So I, the Nats, they moved to DC like the same time we did from the Expos. So they had a great bandwagon and they they won a world series you know and they built a team and now they're dog shit again but hey, you are all over the place i shit. know dude it's, it's weird it's weird though because if you're in wisconsin like every team that you like ha is going to be wisconsin unless it's hockey, hockey. you pick wild like, or the blackhawks because yeah. we're that's our in yeah. the middle yeah you're in the middle and okay. you're in the middle of a lot like of other things too and it's just it's i think wisconsin people from wisconsin don't understand you don't i was gonna say i don't think i would understand having multiple things to pick from it's, in the same terrible. state like imagine being from california you, you got to pick like demographically yeah. which but part. it would be kind of cool like if i as, as lucky as we've been with the packers it would be super cool if there were like three teams and like one was just bad, one was really good. Yeah. And you would just be like, all right, I like this one. Like, I remember as a kid, I didn't care what team it was. I liked the Buccaneers because I like Pirates. And so that was like That's, my team. If like, your parents aren't big sports fans, you yeah. kind of get to choose whatever. So yeah. my parents weren't big sports fans. And I love sports <laughs> growing up. So I did pick and choose, which is kind of shitty, but. Hey, Whatever. you can pick and choose it as long as it stays with you. You know, it can't be every other year. Yeah, if you're switching every year, those <laughs> yeah. are the worst people. My yeah. brothers and I are football teams to start. I wore a Randy Moss Vikings jersey to my first Packer game. Oh, and, shit. And my son. dad was like, I don't know him. I'm that's, like, you brought me here. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, so me and my brothers. Moss uh, is cool, though. He's right. my all time favorite football player. Yeah. And me and my brothers, our three favorite players were Terrell Owens of the Eagles. So Stevens, an Eagles well, fan. Of the Niners first, but yeah. The yes. Niners. Yeah, but at the time he was the Eagles. That's we're a little younger than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say it twice. Uh, <laughs> and then uh I was a Vikings fan for a bit. Um and then Andrew was a Chad Johnson, Chad Ultra Cinco fan. Ultra so Cinco. he is and held true. I mean, he to this day, big Bengals fan, like Burrow fanboy all that shit i mean Dude. you gotta when burrow came you gotta be excited love joe yeah. burrow so i do have a little joe burrow connection my sister was his english teacher she's not gonna like me saying this but she is a teacher in athens ohio she was his english teacher and she said he was an awesome dude super smart very nice respectable um and i i, I root for him because he just has that like that attitude he's got something about him he's got something about him he has a swag you can just walk yeah he got that his, aaron Rodgers has no swag <laughs> <laughs> like, remember when they did that uh, promo video of him walking up to, like, the Jets? Like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't the facility. It was the, yeah, the Jets facility. And he, like, was dressed as – he looked like Nick Cage. Nick Cage. And I was yeah. like, 
oh, this is like so not cool, like a dude. Beater? Yeah, he wore yeah. a beater and he had like this leather bag and he like threw it on the ground as he got out of his car. I was like, oh, dude, you have no swag. You're such a bad guy. But he's you spoiled Rogers. with Aaron Rodgers yeah. for that and long. Far. And, and Brett Favre. 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 Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is the like the master splinter of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like that old wise guy. He's not cool guy joe yeah. and he's never no. never has been but he's never gonna be cool he, that's his role he knows it's been I, his role i think he's cool he's he goes into a fucking hut for three days oh and pitch i love him and, and, no, the back, it's, it's that's funny fucking it's funny cool. as hell that it's like his whole offseason story was not necessarily about if he was leaving the packers or not it was like how long is he going to be in, in a the hut dark, yeah. <laughs> i have to go in this hut and take shrooms <laughs> yeah, for three days yeah, yeah. and then i'll let you know all right. I love how much we cared about that. Yeah. Quick pause. Yeah. Just to, again, once highlight the versatility of the choosing. <laughs> <laughs> my man. Are we switching. I thought we got, I should have brought a bottle. That was my idea. I'm like, we got so the skinny on. guys. You can sneak in with the top on too. Just so you know, they go the once. No, the, like the skinny can. Yeah. You can just sneak them in without taking the top. Oh, really? off. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Versatility right there. Yes. And bottles. <laughs> we are and talking bottles. about, if you saw it, we love that you left enough room that we can still sip out of the can. It's out of the can, out of the koozie. So the company that I work with, they did not leave me enough can init- or enough top initially, and I had to be like, hey, man, like they, they make these all in China. So China, China, they make all stainless steel drinkware. Mm-hmm. Like Yeti has all their shit made in China. Everybody makes this stuff in China. And so they sent it back over, and they're like, all right, this is the final prototype. You know, we, we think it looks good. And I go to drink out of it. I'm like, dude, do Americans just have fat Again. fucking lips? Like or you couldn't? Well, like this? <laughs> probably. Com- that's compared, probably. Compared, <laughs> compared to the rest of the world, we're yeah, fat as fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fat, did you hear the Lizzo news? Yes, I actually have, I, one of my roast jokes is about it. This is amazing. You haven't heard, you heard this? About it? Yeah. Lizzo. Oh, I had, I, no, I have the full article. You I have like a quote of it. Yeah, can I give them a spark notes real yeah, quick, or do you want to read the article title? No, I think the article is funny. I don't it have the is. title, but I have word for word what it was. So just, I, you, you know the whole Lizzo situation where like she's beautiful for who she is and all that, and you know what? Be proud of who you are. But I think we went a little too far on this one. A little too far. This is, this is, this is wild. wild. All right, so... Very excited. Uh, breaking alarm emoji graphic language slash content. A lawsuit has been filed against the Star Wars Duchess slash pop star Lizzo in Los Angeles Superior Count Court by members of her dance crew for sexual harassment and body shaming that involved allegedly forcing the dancers to eat bananas out of each other's vaginas. <laughs> Lizzo allegedly began inviting cast members to take turns touching the nude performers, catching dildos launched from the performers' vaginas, <laughs> and eating bananas protruding from vaginas, the suit says. Lizzo then turned her attention to her crew member, I'll leave this name blank, to protect the victim, and began pressuring her to touch the breasts of other nude women. She declined. According to the suit, Lizzo allegedly led a chant, goading her to do so after Davis... To, oh, I said the name. Anyway, Ariana <laughs> Davis. Her name's Ariana Davis. It's public news. The chant grew louder and more strident, demanding a visibly uncomfortable Miss Davis to engage with the performer. So she did end up touching the breasts, but... Where do I apply? That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah. To <be> Lizzo's <laughs> camp. Could you imagine just being backstage? You could just go backstage to, like, I don't know, switch out the water or, like, refill something, and you just see... Six background dancers bobbing for bananas. <laughs> Slipping on it like Donkey Kong, too. It'd be Playing so beer pong. Dude, it's That's so cartoonish. That 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 whole description of the... It event. doesn't seem real. Like, that's something you... That's we so, would make up. That's like, so specific. But it happened that's over so specific. In the, it was in Amsterdam. Los Amsterdam. Everything happened. Oh, I Amsterdam. thought it happened overseas. Well, it was, yeah. it was filed in Los Angeles. Oh, well, yeah. But it's absolutely insane that's too it's too insane to make up i would have never been able to been like it's the whole how fact will I is get crazy my money than- out of lizzo oh she was making me shoot food out of my <laughs> butthole <laughs> vagine or or butthole it, it was, was vagine, vagine but i don't have a vagine oh okay hey can you do me a favor you got this fuzz hanging from underneath your beard you're good but it is, I mean, it's just been put hanging in the bag. there. What are you doing, oh, we Put it in the bag. Put, put it in the bag. bag. That buzz is worth at least $7 to $12. 7 to $12. Oh, that bag's at least 100 We Ooh, already know, yeah. Hell yeah. I know. Mm, girl, get it. But, yeah, that, that was wild. I read that. I was like, holy shit. I think in Amsterdam, it's just, that's what you do in Amsterdam. Is Amsterdam the red light district? Yeah. Where they, they kind of, it's just a street of prostitutes? I could be Never wrong. Been. I know it's somewhere, but. I've never been. You ever been to Europe? 
Um, I was in Italy for a while. My fiance and I went um, for two weeks to Italy. We went to Florence because I wanted to go pretend I was in Assassin's Creed. And then okay. we went to Rome, Venice, and then Cinque Terre, which is that village. If you've seen, what's it called? Um, Are you pretending Luca. like you know where this is? Because I have Luca. No, it's the the cliffs. Like oh. the buildings yeah, it's the cliffs and building on the cliffs. We went to we went there, and they had the best food at that like little cliff village that I was at. There's like five of them, um, and they had like really good seafood. It was awesome, but I was getting so bored because it was like just houses and like three places to eat yeah. and so my fiance would just love to sit on the rocks and sunbathe and i was losing my mind there was nothing to drink i like had nothing to do so i would just get lost in a mountain village and like didn't know where i was and i'd come back like two hours later and she was still sitting there like on the, on the rocks <laughs> I, I, I could never like retire I, in a relaxing I space i guess like i that. never really thought about that i was like it's beautiful you need to go I'm like you get there you see it for a few seconds like Oh, this is just where people live. I can't go to everyone's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two places that I, 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 I think Venice was great. I don't think we, we stayed there for two nights. Didn't need to. It was a lot of fun, but you didn't need to because it's it's just a, it's an island. And so you're literally just walking in hallways. The whole city is just hallways. It's yeah. so wild. It was beautiful. And then Cinque Terre was a lot of fun and she had a lot of fun there. And the food was great, so I can't complain too much. But staying there for like super long, if you're not someone that likes to relax, probably not the vibe. But with uh, Florence and, and Rome, there was just like nonstop stuff to do where we would just be like, oh, let's go do this and walk around. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Once in a lifetime opportunity. So it was sweet. Where are you going? Are you doing a honeymoon? Did you plan that stuff yet? We're not doing a honeymoon. We're um, doing like kind of a smaller uh, destination wedding um, in Mexico. So, and cause I, but I, okay. So this is the original worst thing. kind of couple. This is, this is the best. Hey, we're getting married, but we're, you got to travel. This is the original plan that I told everyone before we planned the wedding. I said, all right, I've got, I got my fiance on board. And I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a honey rager. Instead of a honeymoon, we're doing a honey rager where we just ask all of our friends to come out for a long weekend and party with us. the like the weekend after our wedding. And then just get married somewhere in between. We get married, no, we get married like the day, and then like we all go out on. I was thinking like a, a boat cruise on Lake Michigan for like four days, and we all just get drunk like as a friend, like as a group, like friend group, because all of us are friends. Are you, we, like, four days. Four days on Lake Michigan. Yeah, you just go on like a little houseboat cruise with everyone, and so that's what I wanted to do oh, was something like that. Okay. And um, all my friends were like, "That sounds like a destination wedding." At that point, and I said, "Would you guys be okay with a destination wedding?" And they were like absolutely we would love to do that so i didn't feel bad about it anymore and so that's why we ended up pivoting from a local wedding and then doing that but um it would it would have been a lot of fun either way hold on someone's gonna want to watch this Wait, lift it up lift it up lift it up oh <laughs> my god <laughs> Woo, papa all right uh oh, girl are you a world traveler at all do you like to try are you a homebody a bit, or i'm clearly not you flew here from maryland which is amazing <laughs> by the way that's bananas i was in the neighborhood so once yeah. Yeah. we were like when, when you by. called me i texted him right away I go, he's actually flying out here I'm like what and we, we were shocked. I mean, because we it, it, it happened so quick. I was like, all right. Well, it's not easy. every day you get to go on a and podcast made more... with such wonderful fellers such as yourself. Oh, my so God, Sally. Come on. <laughs> Give me a cheers with that one. Oh, we got to do. And about this choosy. It's got a, no, it's got a great clink. Guys. It's got a great clink. So, I don't know You're if you the saw. professionals. I don't know if you. Professionals is a very <laughs> is a stretch. Um, we, we did this thing, and I actually really liked it. We did a choosy cheers. And oh, choosy I'd be, cheers. I'd be. Yeah. I really like introducing into like, oh, this is just one of our things we do to start the episodes. Like, we got a choosy cheers for the day. What do you want to cheers to? What are you doing? You're ruining our wholesome moment. I'm using the choosy. This is my demographic right here. Let the man rip. Let him rip. Get it. Do you so need one? No, I'm good right now. But it, this, so the the I didn't really get to talk about the company. So I will tell you, this is like a the. Comedic drinkware company is how I'd kind of describe it. So I'd like to take the best it. parts of like a Yeti and a Barstool Sports, mix them together. Online, we put out a lot of stupid videos, but they're all kind of funny, yeah. goofy content. So you were like, um, a, was it a pool? Was it like a little kiddie pool? Or was it the, the pond? pond? The, That's pond, yeah. the pond and the cock losing. ring were our favorites. Yeah. I was losing pond and it. cock rings. Now yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. I figured those oh, the cock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Lord of the Rings, like the ring. When you and then, yeah. bit it, I was like, all right, we're yeah. good. No. I was like, is, that, is that a cock ring? No. That's a cock ring. No, well, it's got a big girth on it. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. No worries. Congratulations. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but continue. Sorry. But no, we just uh, that that is the goal. So it's like we're we're trying to entertain people. We're trying to bring choosies to mainstream a little bit because people don't know about them. So that's why I'm here. We're representing the brand a little bit. It's uh you know we're, yeah, we're we have excited. fun with it and we're just trying to get the name out there, man. Clearly, we love it. We're excited <laughs> to work with you. Um, we're trying to get him out here even more. So, um, yeah, no, I love it. It's. My favorite, to be honest with you, I like the the top. I was surprised it came with the more stuff in the box, like yeah. having the straw the on the top, lid. the yeah. coffee yeah. lid. Um, coffee you can lid drink so much faster that way. Yeah, like, I mean, we, to- <laughs> after the episode we recorded, we went to his apartment and we were playing like the "Don't Drink and Drive" Beerio and all that, yeah. and just they went down so they went down like, also i looked down like half the case is gone we've been here an hour yeah it was wild that's good yeah the coffee lid is obviously you can put coffee or water yeah. whatever drinks you want yep. so we're trying to market it to everybody so it's like when we talk about the bottom you were saying in the yeah. last episode like what am i going to keep in here my airpods or some shit yeah people can keep whatever they want in there you exactly. know what i mean whether oh, yeah. it's jewelry or money or uh weed or drugs or pouches or whatever the hell you want medicine but it's like we we are mainly the, the reason I, I started it is because it perfectly fits a can of chew it's discreet it sneaks right up in there and there's yep. 10 million americans that use chew or pouches or mm-hmm. you know smokeless nicotine so they beer has had uh, plenty of places to be stored for the past mm-hmm. right 30 years like koozies the koozie companies there's yeti's a four billion dollar company just yeah. on the backs of making koozies so no one has ever made a home for a, a, a tin of tobacco or any yep. sort of pouches. So we finally gave it a home next to our cold deserving beer. We just smushed them together and you know, it didn't exist. I was kind of surprised that it didn't exist. Yeah. That's why yeah, I found it too. Like how did no one think of it? I think that what you know, you got a good one is your goal was to hold a dip can and we're like, you actually could hold so much more shit. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Like your main goal and you're like, Oh, this it just branches out immediately and this is gonna work yeah it's we'll see yeah. we'll see man we got we're talking with like uh different influencers and sponsors and stuff like that to kind of get the word out because I, i'm from ohio i'm from middle america but i live out on the east coast now um i work in a fire department where probably 20 percent of the people use chewing tobacco or pouches or something like that um so I, i'm around it constantly and that's kind of why i thought about it and uh it it, it's usually those 10 million Americans that use smokeless nicotine. They're, they're not usually on the coast and stuff. They're in middle America. Yep. There are people out in the country and stuff like that. So getting the word out to them is, is part of my job. So that's why I'm coming on podcasts and stuff like this. And then also it's an investment in the future because 10 million Americans use them now, but it's a uh, like compounding annual growth rate of smokeless tobacco is 37% a year. So every year, 37% more, people of that demographic Dude. use the stuff the zins the pouches whatever so it's going to be the zin is the 20, new uh, the it's the new what's it called jewel like the zin's it's, the new like jewel it's right uh, now, yeah. I, I don't want to call them fads cuz they've stuck around for so long mm. but it is and this is going to sound terrible like uh younger kids find it like really cool to do all this stuff yeah. and um i i think the purpose of the zins and the rogues were like it's, you're not doing tobacco anymore which is great and that it fits all these perfectly so it's mm-hmm. You want to do all that, put it in here, but you're it's going to grow forever. Yeah. Like, no matter what, people are going to use nicotine. You're going to use tobacco. The minute we discovered how to use it, we haven't stopped. Yeah, so. exactly. That's exactly the thing. And I, actually, with uh, pouches, I was, like, worried about it because um, I didn't want to, like, ruin my teeth. Um, and I talked to a dentist who my uh, good buddy's uh, dating. And she was like, actually, like, it won't fuck up your teeth. The like pouches people, won't? Like the rogues or just in general? It's like the long cut and like, the... If yeah. you're, you're going to do it, just sw- like swap spaces in your mouth. And I was like, okay, then like there's... Obviously, the addiction to the nicotine is the thing that's like probably negative. Yeah. But everything else about it, it's like, all right, I'm okay with this. Like, that's fine. And then I'm having like a good spot to hold it when I'm out there partying. Like, I don't... like. I feel like a lot of people that do do the nicotine thing are always like trying to find a new thing to try to either... Whether it's quit or find a new avenue to like not do it, whether it's like going from smoking tobacco to smokeless tobacco. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, a better way than, and that's way better. And we're not, dude, I'm not here to be an advocate for fucking for pouches no, or, right, nicotine exactly. or, or alcohol, but like two thirds of America uses alcohol and we don't even think twice about it. Play the game. 3% exactly. of America uses these pouches or smokeless nicotine. So it's like, I'm not, 
Listen, I try not to use the shit ever myself. I yeah. just am given a little vessel little for people to keep it. The oh, ones that yep. do use it, put it together, man. Yep. When you're out with the boys, you're buzzing around, you're having some drinks, you got a place to store them, you don't have to fucking sit on them. The rings yep. in your jeans, no, yes. in your pockets. Yep. No like sitting that. on them. I hate changer. having shit in my pockets. I hate it. Like, I, my keys, when we go out tonight, I will waistband because I don't like anything here because I feel like it, I'm not kidding, slows me down. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get out of somewhere fast. I was like, if I got to run... I don't need my keys blocking my right leg. Yep. You kids too, with your tight ass pants and shorts. Yep, you got to. You got to have gotta space. Have right? Yeah, you can't be taking up a whole Absolutely. pocket. If I put them, in the, you'll see every key I got in there. And the extra weight in the bottom of it with the dip. If I get into a street fight, you'll win. Fucking automatically you know I mean? every time. Do you think you were selling weapons? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you can fit lots of stuff. It's a in Swiss there. Army <laughs> knife of koozies. Okay, you can kill people with. That's you can hide your chew. Like you can fit a ta- koozies, skinny yeah. tall boy, yeah. short beer, beer bottle. All right, that's the choosy c h e w z i e dot com. Yes, he got it. You got it right this time. Yeah. <laughs> I did c h e u. My man. My I'll send man. you the video of him going. That is c h e u w z i e. I'm like, we're gonna try that again, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, thank you very much for letting me talk about it. But I have to talk with you guys because. I am a failed comedian. I tried to do stand-up comedy <laughs> We're all 10 sorry. years ago. <laughs> Turn to the wrong. We need Judd. <laughs> so I'm enamored by the fact that you guys get to do it successfully. So I want to hear about your stories, man, and how it's been going. Well, so, I, I don't Can know we about define successfully. Success yeah, successfully is not a thing. <laughs> successfully is not a thing. For We're me. new at it. We stuck to it. I think yeah. let's let's start yeah. with that. We're in uh, a – honestly, I think the Milwaukee scene is a lot of fun. I think it's a it good is. spot for like starting out. There's a, a lot of – good comics and then there's also like a lot of opportunities to go out and do mics and stuff um for my personal thing i always wanted to so i used to stream on twitch play games and i would get hammered and that was my whole thing was i would get (laughs) drunk i would would do a hard seltzer stream so when we were playing a game i would say if i died i drank two drinks if i got a kill i drank one drink and if i won the game then i shotgun a beer and so that'd be a full day from the morning good toss good catch and that's what would happen. And I, I would tell stories on it, and some of those would go do well on like TikTok and like things like that. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to try to do those stories in like in comedy. So they opened up a comedy club here. I started working there just to like kind of be involved, so I could kind of see what's going on. And a buddy of mine signed me up one day and said, all right, now I signed you up. You can't get out. And that's what's going on. But having a fiance and living not in the city kind of takes away from it quite a bit. Yeah. I got to be, I got to be, got to be a good young man. And uh, it's very easy to get trapped in the, uh, hey, I'm going to hang out here the whole night and drink and come home at 2 a.m. So not that I would have ever been successful because I don't think my shit was funny at all. But I, I had to go to these open mic nights at like, they they would start at 11 o'clock, yep. sometimes 1030. And I wouldn't, we'd be, I'd be in a line with like 20 little starving you know, 20 something kids and they all want to get up for five minutes and tell yep. their jokes. And then it'd be like 1231 o'clock by the time I got out. No one laughed at any of my fucking jokes. Everyone's tired. Like, what to am home, I doing? Yeah. I'm starting a family. I got another job. I got to get up at five. Like this is yeah. fucking terrible. Yeah. Yeah. That was the worst part. I worked two jobs. So I wouldn't see my fiance on the weekends except for like the morning. So I'd pack my mornings with stuff to see her and hang out with her. And then weeknights, she'd be home hanging out. I'd be out at Mike's. And so I, I toned back on going out to Mike's. I need to go out more. Um, but the thing is, I don't write enough. So if I, write, if I write something and I think it's good, I will make an effort to go. But if I don't write, I'm just going to be like, all right, I'm not going to go out there and do the same stuff yeah. that I know is going to work. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun shows. I've actually got to perform with some like you know, national headliners, given like my inexperience and the lack of... Um, time i've put into it being realistic i don't think i deserved either of those spots i just got lucky considering i worked at the comedy club that's what it takes sometimes is luck i think i mean we're the last people to talk about being successful i know right now after you asked what's it like being a successful comedian judd has turned it up just a little bit let's see what these schmucks are about to say yeah just you know making a lot of money i actually headline all across the country this is how you write a joke um (laughs) no it it's i said it's definitely a grind it's uh, you don't show up. You got people in the scene. <laughs> the guy who's hosting the roast he's at tonight, um, will probably look at Jack and be like, "Have you quit comedy? Because yeah, I haven't I seen you, you in three yeah, weeks." Kind I thought of you thing. quit. Um, I almost didn't go today. I didn't write. Today. I didn't write anything. I knew I wrote you a little have. bit last night. I knew I wrote a little bit last night while I was in bed, and I was like, "Okay, I have to write that down." And I would like roll over, put the covers on my head, so I wouldn't make up my fiance and type it quick on my phone and text myself, and I would go back to bed. 
And then... Wait, you text yourself? You just wouldn't put it in your notes? No, I don't like my notes. Um, you you, you realize how I, dumb that sounds, right? I'm a right? notes guy, but... Hey, I don't like my do notes you, because I can't, cause I can't find it. So this, what I do is because I have a notification for myself. And so in the morning I go, all right, there's these three things. And then I write them down in my joke book. So if we, if we go through this, these are all jokes or videos that I think are, are funny that I send to people. But these are all jokes. It's just... I have, I have conversations with myself. I was going to say, you realize he's responding to himself. In this no, video. no, because because no, because the hilarious. The, 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 LOL. <laughs> the send the send also comes as a receive, so it's oh, not responding. Okay, so it's the same thing. So it's just me sending. I thought you were replying. Like, Good one, I really Jack. Like this one, Jack. <laughs> that one's really fucking funny, dude. But there's so many times where I'll be hammering, I'll text myself a joke, and I'll go, "What the fuck?" Is that? Oh, I do that all the time. Oh. Where like you're half asleep, and you think of something, and I wrote it down, and one of the ones I wrote was like. Uh, my I compared having sex with my girlfriend to getting rabies, and killed. I, and I, killed. I said it on stage once, and it did well. And even I was like, "So if you guys can tell me what the fuck that means, that'd be great." <laughs> um, but it it's you gotta stick with it. That's it. And you almost treat it as you almost guilt yourself into going, not going. Like you love going. You're chasing. We we were talking about when you chase that one laugh. Oh, yeah. um, all the time. And once you have your best laugh, you're chasing that one then, um, at least from my experience. And it, it's the most ego-boosting, humbling experience I think you can do because it takes a lot to get up there. And the first time I, I went on, I went to my car and I, like, screamed at the top of my lungs. I was pumped. It, it's something you always wanted to do. It's like, sweet, yeah. you have a goal in life and you're like, I want to at least try it once. You're pumped you did it. Yeah. And some people do that and they're like, all right, I did it. I tried it. I'm good. And then those of you are like, I need to do it again. Then you're hooked and you're in. Yep. And so, like, I don't know. You could have been like, oh, I did it once. I tried it. Whatever. The people who are like, oh, I need it. I need that Dude. again. Just that little laugh. If I don't go for a week or two, I, I, like, text my, like, fiance in the middle of the day. I'm like, hey, just, you know, I'm getting an itch. I need to go and do this. Yeah. And that's, like, just how it is. But it's a lot of fun. Like, I, again, I would never say that I'm a successful comedian. I've gotten, like, to go on some, some small shows, and it's been a lot of fun. And when I have done done them it's it's gone well which is sweet but um yeah it's just it's it's a lot of fun and then also like all the people too i mean it's so fun just like watching people like get really funny all of a sudden out of nowhere you don't see them being funny and all of a sudden they figure it out they figure yeah. it out and i haven't figured it out but when you see someone go oh fuck they like yeah. they went even better than like what i thought they were it was it's a lot of fun to see that in person because this is actually a really fun community. We've got two clubs here, three clubs close by now. Yeah. Four if you count comedy on state. So it's pretty sweet just being around like that. How many times did you try it? I think three times. Three. I um Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it, it makes you a, a uniquely confident person, right? Yeah. Like it's a it's a skill set that you have for the rest of your life, getting up in front of an audience and being able to talk and then manage it and make them laugh and kind of transform the whole room. Mm -hmm. I think that is a super cool and like you have that skill set for the rest of your life if if you can do it successfully. But mm -hmm. the shit I did, oh my god. What I was can't your even what imagine. was your favorite joke? Oh, buddy. Did you it have the was, same I'm guessing they gave you 5 minutes, right? Yeah, I don't think anybody was fucking timing at these places. Yeah. But I can <laughs> I, I did a whole bit on like Paul Walker had just died, so I, I like I like dead people are an easy mark for me. So I, I think I I did a bit about how like well Paul Walker would do he he's so monotone and expressionless that he would make a better ghost than an actor. So I, I thought that was funny, like. Like speed kills, bro. Speed <laughs> kills, oh and I don't think that went over very well. It was pretty new. Probably yeah. like he died in 2013, and this was probably like 2013 December. And like I was, yeah. Just that's like the other thing too. Is like wounds. it depends on your audience. Mm -hmm. Like you can, he's done it. I've done it where you do a joke, does well, and then it's for every comedian. And then you go do the exact same joke the exact same way to a different audience, mm -hmm. and they're like. You're the worst human being I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. Well, also doing it at mics, I feel like I, we kind of talked about this last one where I would watch some like comics and they're like doing really good jokes and they don't get reactions. And I was like, why isn't it working? And then I saw them do like a joke in front of a large room that's there to watch like comedy, not like a open mic that's just a bunch of comics that yeah. want to do their set and get out. And then people that are there to laugh drink on purpose on a weekday. Yeah. And then there's laugh on purpose. And then when you have people that are there to laugh on purpose, like 
you just see, okay, no, that's actually good. Because I, I remember I would do like some shitty jokes that like didn't necessarily work, and I did it. I did one about um, prison cooks. That, like, have you seen those TikTok videos? Of, like, I love this joke. Cooks though. that like they like make food in their cell, like fun food, like Laffy Taffy out of like coffee creamer and Kool Aid. And I was like, you don't learn that unless you get your fudge packed every once in a while, because you gotta like try to buy your way out. And I did that in. Uh, Illinois, and there was a convict in the front row. I mean, he loved and it. He was like, "That's not true." And I, <laughs> and I looked. At I'll him go back to prison right now. I looked at him, and I didn't know I said this in the moment, but I was rewatching my set. I go, "Okay, dude, bend over and show me your starfish." <laughs> killed, killed everywhere except for him, except for him. And I was looking at him in front row, and he was like, "Being, he was super cool." Like, yeah, yeah, he, he was. just like wasn't laughing. He's like, "Dude, I'm not gonna like show you my butthole." <laughs> <laughs> and I did that, and the whole room laughed. But like, if I did that in like an open mic room, it's it's not going to work. It, they laugh at the first time, then maybe the second time if you change something, and then if you like get like if you get, get another level past it. I'm not at the point where there's another level past it. Then like they're done laughing at that point. So it always st- sucks. But when you see someone like in a room with people that are paying and want to see like want to laugh, you feel so much better. I mean, even the roast. The last one I did, I lost, but I went up against probably one of the better comics in the area. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, actually, yeah, very good. Like headlines shows. She's a tentative yes for the golf outing. Oh, really? Yeah, Fucking we got the, the other. We got the other three. That's sweet. Yeah. Oh, uh, she's really funny, and she beat me. But even after that, I was like so happy that I, I got laughs and did well. I came home, and it was like eleven thirty, and my fiance was up waiting for me to see how it went. I was like, just you know, I'm probably gonna be up for the next four hours. I'm so excited, so I'm just gonna go sit out and watch TV. <laughs> and she's like, all right, fine. <laughs> I was like, it's so exciting when like you do well. It's a drug. Yeah. What do you do um, now that you're not doing stand up in your free time? Is this taken? up most of your time doing this so yeah I, I i'm an old man like i said i have my kids are 10 8 and 6 so oh, shit. uh for the fire department we work goofy schedules yeah. i work 24 hours on and then 48 off and so i had four days off every week to like raise my kids which 99 percent of dads do not get that no, ability that's to pretty do fucking that sweet. so yeah. i got to do that for the past 10 years i've been home with my kids almost every day during the week and uh it, it's been awesome but now that they went <coughs> to school last fall i was like man i've had this idea got the provisional patent. Um, I think I have time to start this up and, and get it going. So that's when I made the transition, I guess. But yeah, it's a great job for it. If you got that much time off and you can just spend yeah. your free time doing this, mm-hmm. but yeah, you're making it. You, we, you were talking before you got here, the skit stuff. He's like, this is a lot of fucking work. <laughs> it's so much work. The editing at the end of it. Oh my and he God. does none of it. And he's like, it's so much fucking work. <laughs> you don't do, who does the editing. He does. Oh, well for oh, my yeah. dude, I made one fucking skit that had, I made a pizza skit and like that was kind of funny and it got some laughs or whatever. It was just two people. It was like a pizza guy knocks on the door or whatever. And then I made one the other day <clears throat> that was like four different people. And I played like the mom, the dad, I played myself <laughs> yeah. and two kids. And it was, dude, it took me like 12 hours to fucking do. It My kids so were like, dad, are you ever going to finish this video? I'm like, shut up. Go play video games. <laughs> Meanwhile, your kids are like, my dad has gone insane. Please yeah, watch it. Yeah. And then their video goes viral. <laughs> I'm like, go down in the basement and start packing some choosies right now. <laughs> you should have your kids film you film yourself because I bet that would actually do kind of well. Be like, that my be dad's fun. going insane. He yeah. now calls himself the choosy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Act like a WWE wrestler vibe. Act Be the choosy. Yeah. And then have your kids take a video of you or at least someone just take a video of you taking a video of yourself acting like a lunatic and I think that would actually be pretty fucking funny do it with the oldest ones they don't think it's like child abuse yeah. Yeah. but I mean, like well, my dad, have to be my dad hasn't talked to us in two years yeah. he is now the choosy now I'm the choosy <laughs> and you're just like shotgun and beers pour them down you're How'd sitting you out there in a pond <laughs> Dude, gotta watch that a, one. The pond a, a third person legit. perspective on the pond would be <laughs> electric. My daughter filmed it. My your feet are hanging it. out of the. Your feet are above the water. <laughs> In his underwear. Hey, those socks are available too. The pond socks. We will put in a special bag, marked pond socks. They're marinating right you now. Know what we'll do? They're we brown do. from here down. The toes are so. so you know what you should do? Give us a code, okay? That people are like, hey, you buy it, bought it from, you know, you bought it from Fat Chance, and we will ship your choosy in one of our socks. Oh. 
I think we have to best. send. That's the logistics of that. Or it's a nightmare. All no, right. it's we got, not. We we, we got to send it, we so get, many socks over to that guy. No, it's just I one. Mean, it's just one lucky winner. One lucky winner, and we just you know you can. Get I'm a having a, I'm having a panic attack right now thinking about <laughs> thinking about sending socks, dude. You know how? Okay, if you only do one. If you only do one, only it's easy. One, only but one. But if it's everyone that uses the, fat we'll put the thing? socks in and around, and you'll have, it'll be well padded. There'll be nothing plus the box that comes in. And <laughs> I don't great. see how this is good for my bottom line. <laughs> it, it makes sense for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ship and choose these in dirty socks is. Yeah, that, I mean, we're for taking one, it up for one of the guys that watches this. I think they'd love it. All right, let's Except do their it. Instagram got deleted. I yeah. think, you know what I think? I think Judd. I think Judd. Judd backed out of, yeah. his, of his of his. Well, I'm convinced a few to... of the people who comment are uh, my friends, and they're just like they probably are. Yeah, let, fucking with let, you. Let's fuck with them. But, but either way, dude, I love where the sock stuff is going because, listen, if you can make a little extra money off it. Would you say we're considered sex workers now? Oh, no. I don't think it has anything to do with sex. No. And I just leave that word out. Well, sock on our worker. end, it has nothing to do with sex. You're a sock worker. You're a sock anything. worker. I like yeah. that. I like that. And I think you just, you know, there's a there's a community. There's a niche for everything. That's why have I'm selling chooses. Uh, if you had any weird comments whatever on the internet get any weird messages yet because the internet's a wild place not yet but not you yet. have like millions of views and we're just getting started so we do not have the even, creeps haven't come out of the woodwork for even, us yet even at in the beginning you get a few that you're like i'll keep my eye out for them. yeah keep, they're interesting they're interesting like the ones that you get that are like hey can you send me pictures of your ass it's like there are so many other asses you can find online. Why Why do you want mine specifically? Because they see you, and they're enamored by you, and they think you're funny, and they just want to see those cheeks I clap. I don't know if it's a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make it clap for them. <laughs> I Listen, told Jack I had some There's property. a price tag for everything, There's a price Michael. tag. Uh, I don't know. We were talking about that. It's like the guy offered me five bucks once, and I was like, I think my ass is worth more than five bucks. I think so, too. I, I mean, I'd give you at least 30 to 40 what, do, what are you doing with it? Just a bare picture? I don't know. We're talking price tags. For like a bare cheek picture? Bare I don't cheek, understand. yeah. So, I mean, I would sell it for a penny for mine. I don't give a shit. I'd send, I, oh, I'm so cheap. I'm such a dirty fucking whore. I've talked about this. What if your face was in it, though? Yeah, that'd be different. That's because, way different. Yeah, yeah. probably I don't get know. fired. Yeah, yeah, you've got you got a different perspective on this, and I also am going to ask this question, and you probably don't want to answer this because you got to go back to the Firehouse Boys and talk about it. But what, I'll answer. I've, I've I've had I've I think I talked to you about this question. I have had the proposition of going. How much would it cost if you had to suck one wiener a day? Oh yeah, you've asked me this. Yes. Yeah. What's your price tag? Don't need you don't need an answer. If you do, we'll be excited. What would your price tag be? Mine's dangerously low. <laughs> one wiener a day. One wiener a day, for a whole year. For a whole year. For a whole year, whole entire year. Fuck. <sighs> Bare minimum, you thousand three hundred sixty five thousand dollars a year. That's okay, that's what bad. mine is. I, that's no. bare minimum. I'm thinking I need to make at least a mil for the year. At oh, no, least I'm, a mil. I'm, after taxes, though, they're going to take that's away. That's what I'm saying. That's after taxes. They're taking away. Oh, that is after taxes. No, after taxes. Oh, oh no, no, before taxes. This is tax free. free. Yeah. You're getting Venmo. Oh, tax free Venmo. wiener. You get, wiener you money. get tax from Venmo if you get a lot of uh, purchases. But here's the thing that I say. I say I would do suck one dick a day for a thousand dollars, turn sixty five days a year. I'd quit my job, and then all I have to do is do the first half of the year is going to be tough. hand jobs, a lot of hand jobs to make oh, up yeah, for yeah. hand it's, jobs it's really pro Hand jobs are part of the deal, especially in the beginning. It's going to be long sessions, all right? Because I'm not that good at it. I think I am, but I will never be. You know. And then after about a half a year, half a year into it, you feel pretty good. You start knowing the way, knowing how to how to work it. And then by the end, by the time the year's done. Google reviews are skyrocketing. You're going to have a lot, 365 Yelps, at least. The Yelps are getting better. People are excited about you getting five stars on Yelps. Your rating's going crazy. You can start charging double and then triple. <laughs> all right? I like how he's looking to stay in the business. Well, hey. He's like, if you only had to do it a year, but I'm looking at five years down the road, I'm still doing that. Five, five years down the road? Five years down the road? If I do uh, $5,000 for a dick? Oh, buddy. Let's I'm buying an island <laughs> with my Listen, team. He's got a plan. It sounds like he's texted it to himself at least a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I, I, Replied, so, great idea. Up the price. <laughs> your, yours is yours is yours is one million dollars for an entire year. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do the math while do you're doing math. the math. I'm gonna do some math. Can gonna, I ask how you came up with your logo? Oh, um, I'm trying to think. I, I kind of think of myself as like this, like a modern caveman in a a current. 
today's society um, because I am ignorant and stupid and um, I like to drink and I created something ridiculous like this. So I originally was like, I need like a, a caveman, but in, in a modern society, could you put buildings in the background? And the guy on Fiverr that was designing it gave me his first, his first picture was of a caveman. This is, it was the gayest caveman I've ever seen leaning up against a building, like a nightclub building in a super short skirt with a club like this. It was like, oh, no, you could not. I was like, I was like, sir, I know you are like in Bangladesh, but this is not, this is the exact Fiber opposite of what I'm going so for tough, right now. Because I tried be like the Bud Light, <laughs> Bud Light fiasco. I tried getting logos for the first podcast I ever started off Fiverr, and I go, hey, I want these. I sent them pictures of like the studio or like the garage I was doing it out of, and I was like, hey, I want these three things in it, and I want it to look like this shirt, and he sent me back the exact picture. In on just, a shirt. <laughs> it was just black, and then everything was outlined in neon green. I go, what the fuck is this? He goes, I didn't understand what you're saying. I'm like, well, do that you, was a waste of time. Did he type yeah. that to you in the, in the, with the accent? Yeah, all the, they constantly message you, like, pay me, pay me, pay me. I'm like, you did nothing. <laughs> this is terrible. All right, so your blowjobs would be worth $2,740. So, so how, how much? $2,740. Not a bad market. I think it's pretty That's good. That's year three for you. Um <laughs> Uh, you're no. Imagine you're, where I'm at year five. You're not good enough. You'll you, scale up. You think that you're worth that much money? Your your shit fucking blood. Your toothy beeges are worth <laughs> almost three. How grand. do you know his beeges are toothless yeah. or toothy? Look at he's got good. He's, he's got, got good, good teeth. He's got he's got good teeth, good lips. But guess what? Doesn't know how to use them yet. <laughs> do you? No, no. That's why, <laughs> that's why I'm saying halfway through the year I'll get better. That's why I'm saying I'm planning on getting better. Would I not get better? You can't be charging almost three grand and saying, I'll be better. Next time, I'll be better. I don't think... I don't need you're not getting to repeat customers. Man, I, and I have no lips, so I'm not getting into this market <laughs> at all. I am just out from the start, if you don't yeah, I think mind. This, I, think, I think the choosing market's a good one for you. Yeah, I'm going to work I, on the I'm not, I'm not an idea instead. man. I'm not an idea man. <laughs> okay? <laughs> no, you're an idea man, just not a good idea oh, man. Oh, dude, I'm getting, I'm getting fired for sure. <laughs> dude, if only we had Ebe sitting here with us. Fuck yeah, he does listen. <laughs> Eeb. Come on down, buddy. I tried looking for that video. I couldn't find it. I don't know if I saw it. I dreamt that video or not, but. Dude, if, if you sold me on a dream you had, that it's a real alien. What's your take on aliens? Love them. Love, Love them. them. When that stuff came out, I mean, I, I th a couple years ago, I watched something on History Channel that was like, it was all fighter pilots and people in the, the Air Force and stuff, and they're all like, I'm a retired Air Force pilot i saw this this and this and it disappeared and then the next guy comes out and th so they're not like whack jobs no. they're like mm -hmm. actual pilots that are retired that are old men that have no basis for lying right. and there was like dozens of them on this episode just saying the same type of shit and i was like god it, it must exist there must be some shit out there so there's no yeah. way there isn't i think like <clears throat> people used to say oh the the you the population isn't ready to know aliens exist like we need to ease them into it I think they've eased us into it because we just had this giant like court hearing and we no don't give cares. a fuck. No one cares. Yeah. We're all worried about no. what Lizzo shooting out of her pussy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's, it's not. Legs akimbo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bananas <laughs> squirting. Dude, dude, we could be invaded right now and people you might be more worried about. You might be 50,000 years ahead of us, but check this <laughs> banana out. <bitches. laughs> check out how far Lizzo can shoot this thing. <laughs> Watch this distance. <laughs> <laughs> How hard do you got to squeeze to do that? Wouldn't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it feels like. What do you think they charge? Do you ever to shoot a banana? I'll probably let's put cheap. let's put a banana in Jack's ass and put that in a plastic bag and see how much we get for that because I feel like that. I think that ups our price a lot. It's there's DNA it's, on yeah, that. There's but DNA. does that compromise it's, the socks? Or are we doing two separate bags? Two yeah, separate, separate bags. Separate bags. The separate choosies bags. will be in the sock bag. You're only <laughs> getting a half, you're only getting a half banana. How Because I'm pinching off. <laughs> You're only getting half that's a banana, all, dude. That's all the depth you can take. <laughs> you're well, a half banana cat. Half banana. You'll, you'll put half a banana in, and then you'll pull only a half banana out, and you'll be like, where'd the rest of it go? And I go, I don't know. That's not what your fiance says. I don't know says. how it's going to come out, but it's coming out. It'll come out eventually. Oh, God. This is taking a turn. Listen, you guys are selling good shit, okay? 
I'm just trying to get in on the sock game, and it's not. I wore black That's guys why today. Here. He doesn't want us to sell the shoes. No, he he wants the socks. To get on the socks sock is quite game. lucrative. Socks are quite lucrative. You wear socks every day. Yeah, the black yep. socks were requested. They were, yeah. By who? One of your actually. Here's your the thing: Blade Swordsman, probably. They, they were requested on the episode. Judd was wearing black socks. No one cares about, about Judd's Judd socks. No one cares about them, and I love it. I'm convinced Judd has 18 burner accounts and it's all just <laughs> feet people. I really wanted Judd to like. I asked him like, "Do your FBI shit on Sully right now?" I don't. I'm like, "This is gonna be tough." Like, I got nothing to go off of. We 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 talked about how you were just coming to steal our socks. (laughs) (laughs) We're like, he's blade swordsman. He's coming to take all of our (laughs) socks. Well, what's the like? So I'm gonna leave my socks here because I believe in philanthropy as well. So, uh, what what do you think is a good like? Should we set a threshold? Like, it should be. Three dollars or twelve. Three dollars. What, what do you me? think? What that, are we getting for these bad boys? Big's a hundred. Right. hundred. Well, I'm leaving these here. So what are we? What we're are we going to make two. off it? We're up to two. Two. Because you're a celebrity. Yes. Two hundo for two these hundo. bad boys. Yeah, they got black socks. Oh, it was requested. Man. Yeah, I, I can't I take my, my socks off and put these in a the bag today because I have to wear these to the show. I told my girlfriend we were selling them for a hundred, and she goes, "Well, that's great, but I would like to manage that in hundred fifty minimum." Yeah. I was like, "That that's fair." For a pair of socks, we gotta buy new ones. And right. all the blowjob money you guys are gonna make, you should be you shouldn't have to worry. Well, about if we do well, if we do well with socks, I probably won't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if if socks take off, I won't be putting wieners in my mouth. Hopefully, at the end of that year, you guys are gonna need a fucking jaw replacement yeah. surgery because <laughs> you're gonna be putting in work. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be damn. It, no, what's wild is that feet is feet stuff is like an actual big market. My my lady, sorry, honey. Randomly got a message like three years ago and just said, hey, would you mind sending me pictures of your feet? She's not posted pictures of her feet anywhere on Instagram or Facebook or anything. She's never done podcasts or put her feet up in anything visible for anyone to see. And someone just asked and she, she was like, Jack, what, what should I do? And I was like, honestly, like send them, send it. She was well, she was she was a teacher at the time. And she's like, well, if it's like a student or like a parent of a student, like I don't want to be like doing that. So she didn't. But I was like, that's insane that what she off what they offer. I don't even remember. But you always got to ask what they're offering because then you get the broke college because yeah. it offers you five bucks yeah. for your ass. And you're but like, it's I'm out. But it's insane that, that like you have like a like a viewership that's doing this, and you're getting messages. It makes sense. She had no viewership, and it's getting like messages like, can you send me a picture of your feet? There's a market for it. It's electric. Now let me ask you this: You have a lot of good eclectic tattoos. What uh, what's going to be your next one? What do you got coming on the pipeline here? Well, I got um, it's a dragon. No, I'm not. No dragons. I've got. Uh, I got. We could do a wedding ring one. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I, th- I was thinking ball and chain. I think that'd be hilarious. Uh, on the and, wedding ring, and it's been blessed. It's been blessed by the lady. She's like, that's pretty good. On the top, just right here. Yeah, I gotta top. meet her. She's 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 very she's very cool. As much as like. I always act like, oh no, I can't do it. Like pe- people always talk shit about her because I'm like, I can't do this because I have a fiance. But everyone that talks shit is uh, comics that don't have a relationship. It's like, yes, it sounds terrible when you're by yourself and you're being able to do whatever you want. But also, like, I come home and like everything's great. Like, it's not like I'm like being bullied into not doing what I want. Like, I'm choosing to go home rather than stay out and party um, and, and procreate, right. which a lot of comics probably don't get the chance. Exactly. To do, so exactly, a yes. lot of them definitely don't. <laughs> So it's it's weird because I was like, hey, dude, you don't get it. Like, I'm not mad that I'm going home tonight or I'm not mad that I'm staying home. Like, would I like to be out telling jokes? Absolutely. But I'm also home, like, having fun, like, making dinner, do, like, hanging out with the dogs. He's a good, wholesome guy, even though he's going to suck some dick for $2,500. Just trying to take care of my baby girl. Um, But so my next – that's going to be the writing ring. And then I've got, I'm going to do uh, another, like, in – side arm one because it's not completely finished on the inside here all uh, color still yeah all color my, i'm so pale you gotta have color so i'm gonna do that and it's gonna be something that's kind of related to my my fiance and on the exterior on this side i'm probably just gonna do something fun um and then everything on my legs just things i get random ideas for so i'll do probably a warhammer one of those things i paint i'm gonna put one on one of those on my knee and then some other couple things you a tattoo guy uh, not really. I have a couple, but I no, I, I have not. College tattoos or a little bit uh, sprinkled in. I think if I had like uh, enough money at at some point in my life, I would be like, all right, yeah, I'll splurge. But when you have like mouths to feed, 
And your kids are like, yeah, I need priorities. A yeah. banana that has yeah. not been shot out of <laughs> Jack's <Yeah>. butt. <laughs> I need a full banana. Full banana. <laughs> One full All banana, right. please. And tattoos are expensive, man. To There's get a no sleeve, expensive. like I wanted to get a sleeve but my entire life, and it's thousands of dollars, you know. Especially if you want it done well. Like my you can go get it cheap, but my arm's worth more than my car. That's fucking which is fucking crazy. insane. That's, that's wild to say. Well, because wait, my, hold on. How cheap is your car? Well, my car's it's not a my, ninety-three LeBaron. My my <laughs> my arm is. Worth a lot of blowjobs. Um, <laughs> my arms, my arms are worth. A, my arms are like a, almost like five, six grand. Um, but I, it, it was planned out. I didn't want necessarily want to. No, it's f- five grand. Because um, I have this. You parrot. got chest ones and back no, ones. No, but I have a, this parrot up here. You should take your shirt off. Yeah, just pop audience. it off. I want to show my bitch tits for free. Just pop it off. Um, and then that's this right. Took you a long time. Money off it to yep. save it. Exactly. You got to keep some. For but the I had to fly to Florida for him because I lived in Florida and that's where I got this one and I want to have the same guy do my whole arm. So it's not just the tattoo price, but it's also like flying there. I have to get a hotel. I have to do like a couple days in a row because I can't leave. I'm not going to buy a plane ticket every three yeah. six months or whatever. So. Um, is it a waste of money? Absolutely. Am I happy that I have them? Absolutely. So it is kind of the, a, t- a horse of peace here. I what, got little ones. What do you got, buddy? I got little ones. I got a fraction on my forearm. What does the fraction mean? Um, I just tell people I like math because it's uh, when they ask, they're like, what, why it's do you have two case, thirds though. on your arm? Get? I'm like, I'd really not go through the whole, like, I, I have three tattoos. Two of them are matching with other men. Um, and I'm charging too little. You'd be doing it for free. I'm already dude. in the game, You'd be bitch. Doing it for free, dude. <laughs> I'm already in the game. I'm doing do it for free. Um, but I have a two thirds one. Um, I got a that my brother did in his bedroom. So he bought a tattoo gun, and then he, me and my buddy Connor, uh, went in there. We're like, we want this two thirds tattoo we've been talking about, and. I mean, I would not have guessed ever in a million years that that was done in the bedroom. Yeah. the line work well, is quite quite great. It's it is. A, no, you get close enough. It's a, it's a, a little. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you what I got on my leg that was not done in a basement. It was done by a toothless guy in Milwaukee. And yes, garbage. But I'm so my pants he off drew. That. He took an orange sharpie and just drew it on us. And to his credit, he did everything well. Sanitized everything, the table, all that. Us shaved our arms, and he. I'm like, I'll go first. It's my brother. It was my first tattoo ever. And he looks me in the eye and goes, this is a bad idea. And then just starts going in on me. I'm like, okay. And it was the most painful tattoo I ever got. Right there is tough. Um, and it's so deep that when I got this one, this was my second one, I believe. Um, you have three. You I have don't three. Remember? I have three. You no. don't remember what order yeah. you got them in? Yeah, I think it's boom, boom, boom. Um, that I, when I got this one done professionally, my only professional one. Um, I don't think it was professional, but I go, how, how do you think this one's going to fade? Do I need touch-ups? And he goes, that is so deep. It would last two lifetimes. I go, okay, cool. I got this one done professionally. This one's the douchiest one. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and then I have one on my thigh that me and two other guys have, my roommate and the same guy. that I have a match tattoo with two match tattoos, the same guy. In the game, bitch. Are you in just the jealous? Game. Yeah. I think he's just jealous. Dude, I'll get a dragon with you. Um, but we were talking about getting this tattoo for I'll the longest time. I'll get a fucking time. dragon. Let's go get a dragon. Let's man. do it tonight. Let's not. I came home with a dragon tattoo. <laughs> How'd the podcast go? Oh, I spent $1,200. Guess you got a giant tattoo on my back. <laughs> we'll get small dragons. It's just, it's just you two in the mouth of a dragon. Like, very vividly. <laughs> Holding our choosies up. Yeah. <laughs> Buy it. It's got a link on there. Click the link. <laughs> no, spelled we'll put, correctly. Yeah, spelled yeah, spell correctly. Let's put the barcode on there. They just scan it. Choosy.com. Uh, now, I also got a tattoo with several dudes that I yeah. share with several dudes. I think there was six of us for my best friend's bachelor party. We got um, blue sheeps tattooed on our asses. And we had never seen a blue sheep, kind of like in Billy Madison. He talks about he never saw a blue duck. That's why he wanted to draw a blue duck. So we always liked that joke growing up. So when we said when the last of us got married, we would get blue sheep tattoos on our ass. So we went and we have blue sheep tattoos what, on what's our the miss, What's the lady think of that? She didn't. She didn't love it. No. She didn't love it. No, that's no. not something you bring home. But I, I also. And how put often her, is she back there? 
She doesn't get me from behind very often, I would say so. Not very often. Every once in a while, yeah. though. Yeah. Anniversaries, yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Just Thanksgiving. Labor Day. Okay. Easter. <laughs> Easter. You got to get the Easter eggs out somehow, you know? So, oh, you know what? That reminds me. I remembered another segment of my stand-up. Right. Now, I don't remember it. It had to do with Easter. So it was when I moved in with my girlfriend. This was the bit. I moved in with my girlfriend, and I came home, and I went in the bathroom, and in the trash can, there was a bunch of like pastel-covered wrappers, and I was like, oh, I saw the greens and the pinks and the, the purples and the yellows, and I was like, oh, my God, Easter. The Easter bunny must have fucking came. Like I, He knew that I moved to D.C. He must have came. There's all these candy wrappers, and then I go to put the toilet seat down, and that's when I saw the blood. <laughs> And I realized that my my girlfriend had killed the Easter Bunny, and <laughs> and I investigated a little further, and she must have bludgeoned him with like a cardboard cylinder at first, <laughs> and then and then I saw the string, and I strangulation. She fucking murdered strangulation the Easter and Bunny. Blunt weaponry. Oh my god! So that was that was that was the other bit that I remember. <laughs> I love That's it. Great. I, I feel like them. that could work, right? You both, can have that. Both are yeah. de- about dead things. I'll give. Yeah. I mean, they're easy marks. But you, you did you, say death is easy yeah. marks for you. You choose you which one. You guys can each have those. All right. <laughs> you divvy them up. They're for you guys. I think those jokes fit you more than mine. Oh God, I don't. I don't. I'm so dirty. I actually have only one dirty joke for this this roast. So I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. But well, we'll you know what? Because you got to get to the roast. I got yeah. I got three minutes before I got to get in the car. There's your camera. Say whatever you need to promote your product, and then Jack will give you his ridiculous promotion. Well, I don't have much to say. Thank you guys for having me on. It's been an absolute blast. Um, we uh, we started this drinkware company, and we're just getting it going. So we just started in June. It is the Choosy, and you can go to thechoosy.com to get it. But just follow us on uh any whatever socials you have because that's where we put out all our content. So even though if you don't want to buy one, I don't really give a shit, but you can still laugh along with us and we'll be around for a long time. And hopefully I'll get to see you guys again in the future and we'll we'll get together for something else. So Absolutely. Absolutely. What's uh what's the tag? Is, is it at the choosy on Instagram? Yeah, it's it's the choosy we'll, on We'll all tag of them. them and everything Sweet. on the episodes. They're already tagged in the last episode, um, their links and all that. Um, but thank you very much. For, yeah, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. It's been for fun. Coming. It's been fun. I'm and also for handing and us for these, these shoes. Yeah. yeah, it's been great. No we I got some ideas to help us both out. So I think it'll be fun. Um, and as we go out, Jack, give us a uh, give us your give us your ad. Three, two. One choosy. Hey, what's up, guys? Listen, brother. I know one thing and one thing only. My lady hates when I got the rings on the back of my jeans. And let me tell you, the solution to that is the choosy. Let me put my mic down and I can show you where I hide my sneaky snuff. Right there, look at that shit. Look at that shit. You can't even tell it's in, in the koozie. I bring this to work with me. I bring it to weddings, bachelor parties, baby showers, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, nothing, nothing matters anymore because I can hide my nasty, filthy habit in the bottom of this beer bottle. All right. It holds not just 12 ounce cans, 12 ounce tall boys, whatever the size fucking bottles are that are glass. And guess what? You can find that today at the choosy C H E W Z I E dot com. For the low, low price of twenty nine ninety nine. Exactly, brother. All right, we'll see you there. All of our choosy brothers are going to be out there just slinging snuff and that eating muff. <laughs> All right. That is your new tagline. You oh, are. boy. That's going to be tough to push past. We can cut that out for you. Don't worry. Oh, I love it. We cut out love the it. other 45 minutes. Let her rip. Tried doing. Let her rip. I started trying to rhyme with choosy, and it didn't go well, so... <laughs> I was like, this is my best uh, Willie Mays. He goes, that's a baseball player. I go, I meant Billy Mays. So um, thank you very much for coming. We are going to go enjoy several drinks and watch Jack get roasted at the roast. I'm going to get Let's murdered by this young Can man. Can you in stop Arby. turning the mic on and off? Because I don't think you caught half of it. <laughs> no, I turn it off when I know I'm doing something or setting it down and stuff. I caught all of that. I caught all of that. I'm so agile with my thumbs. That's why I, sp- that's why I charge a thousand. There's going to be a thousand tw- There's going to be a 20-minute period where... It's going to be cut to Jack, and it's going to sound like this. Let's let's make a bet on this. <laughs> let's make a bet on this. $1,000? Blowjob? We're done. I'm cutting this out. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>